Hi everyone, uh, let me first begin from the short introduction describing the main point of my talk. Here is the friendly spinner, common place holder that means loading. Everybody are familiar with it, adding more annoying spinners. However, spinners become such kind of standard in industry, they still make user feel upset. <laughs> and let's start again. My name is Dmitry. I am the backend developer from the middle of Russia. I have three kids, and yes, I do open source activity legally after the midnight when they all come to sleep. I'm very excited to be here and give this talk. I hope you will like it. I work from Plifer, a social media automation service which provides business with content workflow, scheduling and analytics. Amplifier started as the project of evil Martians and some of the passionate developer works on it. So I am going to start with the definition, what is optimistic UI and why does it matter? Imagine the classic way of form submission, when user fill all the data and click to submit button. From this moment, user interface locks for a JAX request and set user unable to keep working. But st statistics says that 98% uh, of overall JAX requests are successful. What if we change the way of common data submission to get more confident and hopeful? will change user interface immediately and trigger the visual state of the submit button instantly right after the click. From the, user points of, from the user's point of view, there is nothing more on it. No waiting, no starring for disabled button and not yet another annoying spinner. This way of working is called optimistic UI. It is based on the assumption that in most cases server respond with success. And here is the story time. Don't you know the story of three user interface goes go to a pub? The first user interface comes into the pub, orders a drink, then several more. In a couple of hours, he leaves a pub drunk and tired. The second user interface orders a drink, pays for it up front, orders another drink and pays for it, and so on. In a couple of hours, he leaves pub, he leaves pub tired and drunk. But the third one go out of the pub immediately. He is already drunk. He know how pubs work. He is efficient enough not to lose time. So this third one is called optimistic UI. And why does optimistic UI matter? Time can be explained, analyzed from the different points of view, objective and psychological. Measuring type with stopwatch, we usually operate objective time. But time can be explained from the different point of view, the psychological perception, we, the eternal feeling we have when doing some kind of activities. Just imagine three kind of activity and a dozen of objective time we spend on it. Reading book, make, reading book makes us imagine, satisfies curiosity, and finally make a reader feel happy. Riding a bike makes us get stronger, promotes psychological relaxation, and finally makes us feel happy. But waiting for the user interface and spinner doesn't make anyone happy. And I am sure that the optimistic UI is one of the leading point for a project to be successful and earn the money. According to Google performance model that aims, devel that aims developers and designers to ensure the quality of user experience, uh, the user interface reaction delay more than 100 milliseconds leads user to lose the focus. Does any seller want its client to lose the focus right before they're doing purchase? I think no. And the last one, imagine Twitter doing its user interface in old style pessimistic way, showing the spinner every time when anyone goes to set a like. How many likes will you able to set in those annoying way? I wouldn't. So the overall idea is to stop user suffering. And what do you think is the way for it? Yes implementing the optimistic UI. 
but ideas are very easy until you get deep on it. Let's review some common problems faced in tainted optimistic UI. When you do local development, everything are perfect. Packets are delivered without any loss and delay, and all environment work, works great. But as soon as application goes to production, it comes down to the real network. And the way the real environment works could sometimes be surprising. Server could respond to an error or process request with reversed order, or packets could be lost. One of the huge problem Intending optimistic UI is the handling network error. In optimistic way, we apply all the changes first and then send the data. But what should we make in case of network unavailability? This issue is mostly about being offline. For the most people, being offline means to be out of the civilization for a long period of time. But in fact, we get offline very often during the day for a short period of time. Another problem is to handle server error. When we have all changes already been applied to the user interface, but server respond to an error unexpectedly. In this case, we have some kind of inconsistency between user interface and the actual object states. And another huge problem is to merge conflicts when a couple of users edit the data, edit the same data, and those changes are contradictory. So most of these problems are well known and is already solved. But for now, there is no complex systematic solution for all these problems applying for the modern web application, except in the press reload button in the browser. It, it always helps. And let's talk about possible solutions. All solutions could be taken from the computer science, however they are already well known, they are not fully implemented for the modern web. One of the ideas is event sourcing. When we change the classic way of submission of persistent object state and turn out to another approach for saving the state changing the sequence of state changing events. Since that the actual object state could be reproduced, could be reconstructed by replying replaying all the events. Another idea is to consider mo modern web application as distributed system and its component communicating with each other by synchronizing the messages. Since that, all the component of distributed systems such as clients and server has, have some significant characteristic of distributed system, the lack of global clock. These two basic ideas underlay the Lagax framework invented by Andrei Sitnik from Evil Martians. Its aim is to introduce new way of communication between server and client. When we talk about frameworks, we usually mean a set of ideas and tools uh, and supporting instrumentation to build software in a specific way. But frameworks are also about reducing complexity. Like Ruby on Rails simplifies the web application development, React aims for retained component rendering, and re Redux helps to manage the states. So Lagax as a framework is not about just the code. Let's review some ideas and concepts about it. First of all, it suppose as the complex transport solution, it's supposed to use WebSockets protocol. WebSockets facilitate the real-time data transfer and allows client and server pass messages back and forth until the connection keeps open. This also means that we've got the live updates out of the box to build the collaborative software. But WebSocket is mostly about transport and Lagax introduce specifies the open protocol. It strictly defines the format of messages between client and server and allows Lagax companies to be re-implemented with the help of other technologies. So all the instrumentation are also included. Here are the Lagax server and the client-side JavaScript package. Server handles the WebSocket connection, log events to the internal store, and synchronize all the changes with the active clients. From the other hand, clients 
wraps the Redux with compatible API object and do all the synchronization in background. There is no more need to send a JAX request and process the result. Lavax client will do all the data synchronization and takes care about transport. Just put the event to the Redux-like object and that's all. Client also has built-in set of UI widget to indicate the actual network state in standard way. So all the Lagax clients track the network connection with periodical pings. In case of network unavailability, client holds the pending events and will resend them after connection restores. This also means that we have offline mode support out of the box. And time. Time is hard in distributed system and the task of introducing global clock is entirely unsolvable. But solution used, time solution used by Lagax is to calculate the time shift, the difference between client time and the server time and correct it with the round three package time. This time shift is used by client to convert local time values into server time values before doing synchronization. Of course, this solution isn't universal and has the transport error on it, but in practice for doing user interfaces, this error isn't critical. And Lagax also takes care about proper event ordering. Time by itself has some issues like incorrect time zone usage or automatic time correction that leads time to be inconsistent in distributed system. That's why Lagax takes every event with timestamp and the incremental counter. Even if two events will have the same timestamp, the counter will differ, so the events will differ as well. Using this, this time infrastructure and taking care about event ordering, Lagax provides all the infrastructure to implement the automatic conflict merging. The simple case, the simple way of implementing it is to use last twin strategy as shown on slide when the previous changes don't apply even if they are synchronized later. So last changes win. This also means that Lagax supports the advanced way of conflict replication by using conflict-free repli conflict replicated data types. And of course, handling network error is very important doing optimistic UI. In case of network, in case of server error, Lagax has the special undo event. It synchronizes this event back to the clients to make them revert all the changes in user interface. Getting this event, JavaScript client removes the original event from Redux store and recalculates the actual component state. And yes, we are at Ruby conference, but all the Lagax infrastructure is based on Node.js. And it will be great to integrate this great feature with existing Ruby backend. And yes, here is the solution. Lagax has the internal proxy component which allows to synchronize messages over HTTP protocol. It allows any backend to plug in any backend, uh, receive the messages and perform in business logic. It also exposes its own endpoint to allow a backend to synchronize messages back. It all works over HTTP protocol. So we started to integrate Lagax with the existing project, existing Rails project, and as a result created the Ruby gem called Lagax Rails. It helps to integrate, to easily integrate Lagax with the existing Rails backend. Let's review some ideas and concepts and basic abstractions of the game. Actions and meta are the wrappers for underlying protocols. Action represent the Lagax event has type and additional parameters working the same as action params in Rails. And the meta is helping metadata describing Lagax event with identification time and the destination scope. Authent user authentication is also supported by using credentials. Credentials has to make some kind of round trip starting from 
backend rendering to front end and then getting back to backend where they are validated by provided lambda function. As Rails does, we also support convention over configuration to simplify the dispatch process between event type and corresponding action class. And as Lagax supports channels natively, we also do. Channels are used for clients to be notified about on the specific type of events. When, cli when clients is subscribing to event, we have to initialize it with actual component state. It is easy to do by re-implementing only one method. What is initial state? Imagine we are developing some kind of chat with live updates and the initial state of any thread could be represented by example with the set of the last messages from the thread. And of course we support backward synchronization when data synchronization is initialized from the back end. It is easy to do, it is easy to do by calling only one method. In this case, backend triggers the event and asks Lagax to synchronize it with all the clients. So in that way, Lagax do all the broadcasting by itself. And as we have the active record dependency, we implemented a simple way of conflict merging using last twin strategy. It is based on the additional JSONB field where it tracks the time of the last attribute updates. And the most important is to deal with server error. As shown on the slide, for example, in validation error, we send the undo command and provide the original event metadata. This metadata refers to the original event, event and make logax to find out the destination scope, the set of clients which has all the changes already been applied to the user interface and which needs to revert these changes back. Whew. This is mostly all about ideas, concepts, theories, codes and so on. Let's review some production use cases of, of Lagax. The first straightforward use case is the optimistic way of update the entities in the project. As shown on the slide, here, is, here are two browsers working with the same project. As soon as the first client updates the project name, this event will automatically synchronize with Lagax server and with other clients. That's why in other tab, this data updates without any reload and without writing any specific code. Here is the slide showing how all it works. All the clients who are interested in getting the specific project event are subscribed to this project channel. And after, the, after any client triggers the change event, it drops it to the project channel and asks Lagax to, syn to do all the synchronization. At this time, this event synchronizes with other interested client and with the backend as well. And backend persists all the changes. Another significant showcase is to implement some kind of the chat with the live updates. It works mostly the same way by using subscriptions client for specific type of event. When first client writes the message, it just appears in other client without any specific code. And the last Interesting example is the centralized way of updating user interface from the backend internal background job. In Amplifier, we have the actual currency rate on front end. It is very helpful to show the amount of money in local currency, but as because the Amplifier is the single page application and users don't reload page for a long time and because currency rate updates daily, we have to initiate some kind of centralized procedure to update user interfaces. And it is easy to do with Lagax. 
all the clients who are interested in receiving these updates has the, have the subscription. When doing periodically daily rake task, we triggers the specific event, rate, currency rate update event, and make logax to synchronize it with all the clients. Since that, all the clients has its user interface already updated. It is simple to do with a couple of line of lines of code. Wrapping up everything, I has to say that Lagax and its Rails integration is the suitable framework to make optimistic UI with the modern features out of the box, such as live updates and offline first. Its goal is so its goal is the easy integration with existing front-end infrastructure, and for now it supports the easy integration with Ruby backend. Talking about the states of Lagax, for now it is still in production in Amplifier project, but however it, it has not stable version yet, it is easy to play with it with any existing infrastructure project. And you, if you are wondering about pure Ruby implementation, yes, it is in plans and possibly will appear after the first stable version of Lagax will be released. For now, that's all I think I've done. If you have any question about Logax, here is the contacts of mine and Logax project. Also, check out technical article of Amplifier on our Dev2 public. Check out the Logax source, Logax Rails Ruby Gem source code, and give Amplifier to chance they automate your social network, or at least register for two-week trial to see the Amplifier effort to make the optimistic UI. That's it. Thank you very much. Thank you. So, questions? Right there. Uh, hi. So, I, I maybe I some missed. It's not in production yet. Could you please repeat? Ah, you said that it's in production, but you saw that. Uh, yes, there is. There is only one project uh, on which production it works. It is our project. So, uh, okay, I had the, the next question. I can ask, it, but I'm not sure that it's available. How to scale Logax? It supports scaling by sharing the data with the help of Redis. Ah, okay. Yeah. Next one. Uh, yeah, where is it? Uh, hi. Uh, could you please explain how this approach will work with uh, service site validation, for example? So, so user uh, tap the button, see green light, and after that, after that, he received validation error, for example, for field lens or something else. Yes, uh, in case of validation failure, we have all the changes already applied to the user interface and have some kind of inconsistency. In that way, uh, having the validation error, we send back, broadcast back the undo event for all the clients which have these changes already been applied. No, uh, but uh, in this case, we are talking about one client. For example, uh -huh. I fill the form, for example, I'm buying the ticket. And I uh, miss something like uh, my name. But I have uh, the service site validation only, but not JavaScript validation. Mm -hmm. So I see that my form filled correctly because, first of all, I accepted the changes, but not checked the changes, validated the changes on the server. So how it will look for the client? First, you see that everything OK, but after the moment, nothing is OK. Yes, after the moment we understand on the server, on the backend, that it is inconsistent state and send back the special command, the special logax command which names undo. And we refer to original event mm -hmm. and sending it back. In this way client get notified about the undo event and can somehow process it. Do you think it's uh, good for user experience, for user interface, that you see a successful state and after that error state. 
I it, think it will be better to wait for the actual result. I think it depends. It is not the silver bullet that you can decide by yourself, but statistics says that in most simple cases we can implement the optimistic UI and it would work better. Oh, okay, I understand. <laughs> Thank you. Uh, one more there. Two more there. Okay. Uh, okay. Uh, firstly, thanks for uh, this uh, broadcasting. Yeah. And uh, oh, it's me. Yeah? I'm right there. Yeah? <laughs> uh, my question was uh, like uh, before. Yeah. Uh, what about uh, some kind of uh, authorization, for example? Because I'm a user. I'm just clicking um, login button, and uh, something wrong. I uh, I tap wrong password, and uh, API sent me. Oh no. Uh, like I'm a client, I see that uh, I tap log in. Uh, I see the screen like hello, you are logged in. But one moment uh, later, I see oh, go back. Yeah. Okay, I get it. Um, I think there are several approaches to deal with it. The first is not to use optimistic UI for such critical functionality, and the second approach is. To do nothing in case when, no, for example, if we imagine another case when user registers and in classic way user expect to be the, when everything is okay, user expect to be some kind of um, page where is written okay, you are registered success, but indeed user don't need it in, and in this case we couldn't show, we can show nothing to it. Okay, so so I can use uh, two approaches. Like uh, for login, I will uh, use a spinner, <laughs> <laughs> and uh, okay. if I do something uh, that, that like uh, light version of uh, changes, it will be your approach. Yeah. Yes, this is why Ogax is for now works only in our production because we do some kind of experiments with it and getting to know how it how to deal better with it mm -hmm. and uh, I have one more question regarding uh, you, you, um, you say about changes of uh, like uh, change name project uh, of two users in same time yeah, and uh, if I change and in one second uh, somebody uh, change it too yeah uh, wins uh, who was uh, the late uh, the last yeah uh, because so we yeah it's okay for me it's okay but the question is uh, not in this one uh, he wins but but what with my changes, what with my name, because I type something, I want to uh, put this name inside the project, uh, do I see this uh, somewhere, like a history, or do I see that uh, uh, server tracks that I want to change it? This is the good point, because of now you've got the latest value synchronized, so you type it one value and get another. Mm -hmm. Oh, okay. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, one more there. Uh, thank you for your talk. And uh, I have a question about, uh, could you please describe some more details about CRDT capabilities of the framework? And how, in general, conflicts are resolved on the server side? Yes, in general, we have no CRDT implementation, but offer all the infrastructure for doing it by holding, by taking care about events ordering. So if you are ready to implement the conflict-free replicated data types and get all the restrictions you will need to follow to use conflict-free replicated type, it's your on your own way. All right, so um, I think we're done with the question. Sorry, like we're running out of time. So you can ask question afterwards. Uh, let's thank uh, Dmitry for his talk. Thank you very much.